heat for the Hamilton Trophy. Three times around a three-mile track at a minimum 95 miles an hour. Rack up three laps at that speed, and you can race the world's fastest water scooters for cash and the trophy. Johnny Cleaver won his chance with the best three-lap average of the year, 107 miles per hour. Now, the day before the race, he was unwinding a little with his fiancée, Jill Bromley. And guess who was chaperoning the party? I'm going to get wet, Commodore. He isn't a Commodore, is he? Sure he is, with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Watch, tomorrow he'll be out there with a the whole flotilla. Really, Mike? Doing what? Oh, up in the Coast Guard, keep the course clear. Holding back the spectators, things like that. You see, you don't have to worry about me winning, honey. Mike won't let the people mob me. Oh. Uh, you wait for me down below now. He's so conceited. He's got a good chance to win that boat race tomorrow. Well, he's got to simmer down. He's wound up all right. But compared to that brother of his, I swear, Mike, Fred wants Johnny to win so badly his teeth ache. You better go ahead, huh? Your boyfriend will be wondering what's happening to you up here. Nothing. Darn it. <laughs> At the bottom of the bay, Jill looked around for her fiancé, Johnny. They were wonderful kids, both of them, bursting with energy and high spirits, especially Johnny, because of the strain he'd been under for so many months. They were expert divers. No matter how much they fooled around, I was pretty sure they wouldn't do anything really foolish. WM-2050, Mike Nelson. WM-2050, Mike Nelson. This is Fred Cleaver. Over. That's WM-2050, Mike Nelson. Over. Trouble, Mike. I've got to get together with Johnny. He's still out there with you? Yeah, but he's in the water. What's the matter, the boat? You bet it's a boat. Tell him to get in so he can lend a hand with it. Or we can forget racing tomorrow and watch TV. Okay, Fred. How soon do you need him? Like an hour ago. I'll be waiting at the yard. Out. Uh, a tough break for Johnny. I wondered if his brother Fred realized how tough. Today was Johnny's last chance to rest up before tomorrow's rocket ride. Now he'd have to work the rest of the day. Most of the night, too, maybe. Fixing the boat. Mighty big handicap to give a driver and expect him to come through in front. Alive. On my way down, I kept trying to figure it out. If Fred was so anxious to have Johnny win tomorrow, how come he hadn't called in some expert mechanics to fix whatever was wrong with their boat? Why did it have to be Johnny, who needed every bit of rest and relaxation he could possibly get? It was all well and good for Fred to keep going till he dropped, to make sure their boat was in perfect shape. But if Johnny did the same thing, he wouldn't last out the first heat. Well, that had to be their problem, though. Mine was to find Johnny and get Fred's message to him. Johnny and Jill spotted me first. When I caught sight of them, they were off and running. Catching up with them figured to be tough. They had a mighty healthy lead to start with. They lengthened their lead so far, I just about lost sight of them. Still, I had to get the word to Johnny pretty soon, or all the work that he and Fred had done so far might add up to zero tomorrow. Moray, six feet of steel elastic topped by a head full of teeth too sharp to believe until you feel them. 
I was sure that Johnny and Jill had too much sense to be hiding anywhere in this area. But where were they? I spotted some bubbles. A few moments later, I saw Jill. No sign of Johnny, though. Maybe he'd gone topside. No, he'd just been hiding around the corner. He rushed me and I fastened my weight belt almost before I knew it. Up I went in spite of myself. But I couldn't waste any more time trying to deliver Fred's message, so I dropped it. The slate read, Fred needs you at Boatyard, urgent. They got the message fast. You think sure I got the bugs out by now? You haven't been idle, that's for sure. Blower spread, intercooler, intake valve? Both intake valves, both exhaust valves, both magnetos. Check them all, John boy. What's doing it? Gremlins? You tell me. Something so small, probably. We'll flip when you find it. Take me five minutes to fix. When he finds it. Now remember, you're the crew chief. No, just a fair country handyman, that's all. Hey, we go in the first heat tomorrow, 12 noon. Let's get cracking. We'll make it. Great day off while it lasted, huh, Mike? Thanks again. Uh, my pleasure. We'll do it again soon. You know, it's going to be a rough day for you tomorrow, even on a full night's sleep, so uh, you get as much as you can, you hear? Look, I shed he's still the best driver going, and I bet on him to win blindfolded. And I agree. Come on, lover. <laughs> Take care. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> Trouble was minor, a defective gasket deep inside the intake system. But it took Johnny till four in the morning to find it. And just four hours later at eight, he was checking out Miss Tewry on the official oval. There was no time for a thorough test. The course closed at 9 a.m. Then the race officials and the Coast Guard took over. The Coast Guard's job was maintaining safety on the course. Ours, as members of the auxiliary, was to police the surrounding waters. Unless spectator craft stayed where they were told, boats and lives could be lost, their own included. As flotilla commander, I assigned each of my boats to a specific post. Then I headed out to my own, at the far end of the bay. I had warned Jill that she wouldn't be able to see much of the race from here, except on TV, but she insisted on coming along anyway. Hey, you want to take a look? Thanks, but what I can't see won't scare me. You're that worried, huh? Ah, uh -huh. oh, he's a fine driver, the best. On four hours sleep? before the first heat. Go ahead, Mike. Turn it on. No reason for you not to see it. No reason for me either. And coming up to the starting line for heat number one in this year's rooster tail run from the outside in, it's Ron Stevens in Shandy Gaff, Bill Dord in Cyclone 2, Johnny Cleaver in Miss T. Reed. Sid Burns in Goodbye Charlie, and Ben Kenoy in Hurry Gal. 
can't tell who's going to get away first. They're bunched so tight. Cyclone 2, maybe. No, it's goodbye, Charlie. Then Cyclone 2. Hurry, gal. Miss T. Ree and Shandigan. Cyclone 2 has a bone in her teeth, and she's running with it. She seems to have it all her way, and now... No, no, Miss T. Ree slashed ahead through the spray, and she's in the lead now. Cyclone 2 is pressing her hard, though, followed by Goodbye Charlie and Hurry Gal. They hold those positions going into the back stretch. Still anybody's race. Now, Shandy Gap is moving up into contention. Yes, Ron Stevens is really pushing Shandy Gap hard now. Apparently, he doesn't like it because he's moving up on the outside now. Yes, looks like the first sprint of the day. Johnny Cleaver in Miss T. Reed, veering to the outside as he tears through the 1,000 yards straight away toward the south turn. Just what he did the other day in his record-breaking 107-mile-an-hour qualifying heat. He's going to hit that turn all out. He's sweeping wide, very wide, maybe too wide. Don't see how he can clear the patrol boat. Can't tell for sure, too much spray, but the others are knifing past with Goodbye Charlie leading, followed by Shandy Gap. Red flag, red flag, they're stopping the race. Do you think it could be Johnny? An accident. There go the rockets, two red rockets, telling all the hydros to get off the course. We still don't know why or what boats are involved, perhaps some spectator craft. Our TV cameras have just picked up the rescue helicopter that the Coast Guard always maintains for such emergencies. We'll follow it to the accident scene if we possibly can. There it is. There, the 40-foot Coast Guard patrol boat that was on duty at the south turn, as you can see. It was hit hard, very hard, and it's sinking. And there's the boat that hit her, Johnny Cleaver's Miss T. Ree. He swept into that turn even wider than we thought. No sign of Johnny. He must have been hurled out when he hit. As far as we know, the patrol boat crew all got off safely. We're checking that. And just as soon as we... Hold it, hold it. There's a man coming out now through the gaping hole, a crewman. That's Ron Stevens of Shandigaff diving in to see what he can do to help anyone else in the water. There's someone down there. We can't make out who. There goes the frogman from the helicopter to team up with Stevens. And down comes the rescue basket. They're putting someone in it. It could be Johnny Claver. We don't know. Do you think he's all right? I'm sure he is. as we headed across the bay. We still didn't know the identity of the man whom the helicopter had scooped up. We could only hope for the best. Helicopter's landing now. Oh, if he isn't on it, Mike, I'll just... Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. There's the chopper now. She's landing, kicking up a cyclone of dust. They brought the crewman out, and they put him in an ambulance. Now a second man's getting out. We're not sure, but he looks like... Yes, it's Johnny Cleaver. Well, friends, that's good news. Oh, he's all right, he's all right. Hey, hey watch out, watch out. Killed. You're going to get us killed him in his stomach. Yeah, stop it. It's wonderful. I wonder how it happened. I didn't think he was that tired. No, neither did I. I don't know what happened. I went into the turn the exact same way I did in the qualifying heat. 
Then bam, that was it. End of the line. Johnny, it's got to be more than that. Well, look, let's face it. The kid was dead tired. I wasn't that tired. I didn't goof. I'm not saying you did, John Boyd. But if you made a mistake, you just... I didn't. Johnny, the reports say that once you started swinging wide, you didn't try very hard to get back on course. Is that what you think, Mike? You tell me differently? If those reports stand, you've had it. You'll never race a hydroplane again. Johnny, was there anything wrong with the boat? I've set it off. Fred, let's go, huh? Sure, John Boy. Sure. Do you think it was Johnny's fault? No, it's hard to believe. He's too good a driver. Didn't the, didn't the Coast Guard find anything wrong with the boat? Nope. Not the parts they examined. The parts they didn't examine might tell a different story. I think I'll go down there and see for myself right now. Oh, thanks, Mike. I, I'll never be able to thank you. Neither will Johnny. If I can find something to clear him. Oh, I know you will. And thanks. I wasn't able to start my search underwater as soon as I'd planned. The area was preempted by the Coast Guard to haul up the patrol boat that Johnny had rammed and sunk. I still didn't know if it had been his fault, but it sure looked that way. I didn't get clearance to dive till late in the afternoon. When I did get downstairs, I saw that I had my work cut out for me. Miss T. Ree had been doing close to 100 miles an hour when it hit that iron-hulled patrol boat. No wonder the debris was scattered far and wide. Finding any kind of a definite clue wasn't going to be quick or easy. The fact is, I didn't have any clear idea what I was looking for. I picked up whatever seemed to be worth further examination. I didn't think that I was making any particular headway. But somebody down there didn't agree with me. Another diver. He seemed to think that I'd found something very important. And he wanted it. It was up to me to convince him that he couldn't have it. Driver was Johnny Cleaver. What's the big idea, Johnny? Forget it. Why'd you try to hijack me? It's my business. Why, Johnny? Why? Now, maybe Jill knows, huh? Now, uh, Fred. Johnny! Johnny, Jill! Johnny. Mike, you're kidding. Johnny wouldn't do a thing like that. He did, Jill. You told him I was going out there, didn't you? Yes. 
Why didn't you tell him why? Well, he, he knew that you were just trying to help him. I didn't ask him to. You still don't want to say why you tried to hijack me, huh? Sorry. Well, that accident was either your fault or your brother's. Now, you think that uh, Fred pulled some kind of a boner with that boat? You trying to protect him? Hey. What are you talking about? He checked her out himself. This morning, the boat was perfect. John Boy wasn't trying to protect me. Then you're protecting yourself, huh? Well, I'm going back out there tomorrow morning. You better come up with an answer before I do. This trip down, I found something right away. Trouble. This diver, whoever he was, knew exactly what he was searching for. It seemed that he'd spotted it. What's more, he was all set to take it away. Not if I could help it, though. Not before I found out what it was myself. It was the rudder post, the rod that the rudder swings on. And one glance told me that it had been sabotaged. It added up just one way. Johnny Cleaver had tried to kill me to keep me from exposing his brother's sabotage. But in that case, who was the diver who had rescued me? Whoever he was, he needed help. I gave it to him as fast as I could. started for the service together. My head was throbbing from the wallop I'd taken and buzzing with questions. The answers gave me a real headache. It was Fred Cleaver who tried to kill me. He had sabotaged the boat to kill Johnny. Johnny had tried to cover up for him once. This time, though, he'd had to help me nail his brother for Fred's own good. I gotta go to jail. Okay. I got it coming. Oh, well, I was out of my head, sure, but. But that's no excuse. Where is it? I'm not a judge, Fred. Or a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe that's what I need. A doctor. You'll have the best, Fred, I promise you. How do you figure it? I jobbed that rudder to kill you. You didn't mean it, Fred. You couldn't. You still don't get it. I've been hating you ever since you were born. Over 20 years, boy. Why? Because you were the baby. Because you got everything, because... Mom didn't even know I was alive. So I wanted you dead. Didn't you know that? No. Do you still feel the same way, Fred? I don't know. Tell you the truth, I don't feel anything now. Come on, Fred. Let's go tell the Coast Guard, huh? Yeah. See you, Johnny. See you, Fred boy. Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.